Welcome to Pullman, Washington, a small town that's absolutely obsessed with their college football team of Washington State University. And today, we're going to go to Martin Stadium, the home of the Cougars, to review the stadium experience. Giza Field at Martin Stadium is located on the campus of Washington State University, who competes in the Pac-12 Conference. The stadium opened up in 1972 and replaced the former Rogers Field that stood the location from 1892 all the way up to 1970, when the main grandstand that was wooden was burnt down in a suspected arson attempt. All the wood stands were then replaced and two years later it opened up as a concrete structure named Martin Stadium. Named after Clarence D. Martin, who was the governor of the state of Washington from 1933 to 1941, after his son made a sizable donation to the project with the request that his father's name be attached to the stadium. The stadium has undergone many renovations throughout its history, starting back in 1979 when there was expansion made as it was one of the first stadiums in college football to remove the full track around the playing surface. The field was lowered by 16 feet as this added an additional 12,000 new seats that were closer to the playing surface. In 2012, an all new press box was added, which was complete with club levels, suites, and many other premium seating experiences. And then the 2014 renovations introduced a new premium HD scoreboard, as well as the $61 million project that was the new Cougar Football Operations Center, as this building on the west side of the stadium hosts the weight rooms, locker rooms, equipment, training, and many other additional offices and amenities for the players and staff, and is the central hub for the football program. And after all these changes and renovations, the stadium has a current capacity of 32,952. On the Friday before the game that we were going to, I had quite a bit of time to walk around the stadium. And I really enjoy when I get a good chance to do this because it gives you a good feel for the architecture of the stadium itself when you're not surrounded by people and can't really see too well. The east end with the scoreboard butts right up to the street and I really like the aesthetic of the metal gates with the brick. And if you go up to the gates, you can see right into the playing field itself from underneath the scoreboard. On the northeast side of the stadium by those gates is where that famous cougar statue is. And of course, we had to get our picture there taken on game day. The north side of the stadium butts right up to the track and field's home venue. And the concourse under the north stand is actually always open so you can walk through it. And typically the sections will be closed off with big metal gates. But it's really cool that this is always open to cut through and I've done it several times when I spent some time on the campus. The northwest side is home to the student gate, and as you walk across the west end, you go by that new Cougar football facility. And there's actually a lot of opportunity to look into the stadium from that west end, both on the north side and the south side of that complex. And it's really interesting that butting up to the main south side grandstand, there's this large hill with several trees on it. It makes it a really interesting aesthetic. And if you look back at some of the old photos of the stadium, you see that that hill was there even then. Outside the main south grandstand, you see a lot of the offices and suites up in the stadium. And all this was built up in that $80 million project to renovate the south stand in 2012. And everything was queuing up for game day, and to me it really felt like... The calm before the storm. Oh god. No. She didn't really like that joke. Oh well. But real close to the stadium, there were already RVs here, and normally these RVs get here about Thursday night and they camp out for the entire weekend for the big game on Saturdays. And it's crazy just how much these fans love the party and tailgate, as they make an entire weekend out of the game itself, which really creates some great atmospheres and traditions. Welcome to game day, and we had to take in a lot of the festivities available in and around the stadium before the game itself. And don't forget, my girlfriend's a cougar. Yeah, I know I used that joke last year in review as well, but my girlfriend is a graduate student at Washington State, so technically she is a cougar, even though I'm a few months older. But we made our way through some of the tailgaters to check out some of the action there. And eventually we made our way to where the team bus enters and the players all come off. As someone that used to be a marching band myself, I love seeing the band being so involved and created a great atmosphere for the players coming through. And the WSU mascot Butch was looking super cool in his fresh shades and the nice custom headphones with the B on them. After that, 
that we made our way to the west side of the stadium, where the practice fields are, as they have a lot of festivities yeah. going on on the field itself. And my girlfriend Jordan picked out a new hat. What'd you find? <laughs> and I made a great new friend. By the large field house, they had free drinks that were handed out, which was free, fantastic. Free, free, free. F -R -E -E, free. And we poked our head in there to see some of the festivities and events going on inside the field house, and it was absolutely packed with people. It's a great historic field house, and it looks awesome from the outside, and I'd love to get the chance to maybe check that place out a little bit more someday. And before we go in the stadium and start exploring, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying it. I'd really appreciate that. And while you're at it, if you want to go to cool games like this, be sure to check out SeatGeek and use my code SAC Sports Adventures for $20 off your first purchase of $30 or more. All right, now let's get inside the stadium. So we entered through those Northwest student gates and we're immediately on the north side concourse, which we saw earlier since it's almost always open to public. So let's head on through the tunnel and into the seating bowl. So upon getting into the student section, you can immediately notice that the lower sections below the walkway are definitely part of that addition when they removed the track, while the seats above the walkway were a part of that original concrete structure built in 72. However, all these lower seats were super small, I mean, they don't really sit in the student section anyways, but it's kind of weird that the metal benches are right on the concrete themselves, and it's definitely not the height of a regular seat. I really enjoyed the mobility that the stadium allowed us, as this walkway here between the upper and lower sections, I could take along the entire north side of the stadium. And we took that all the way to the east end underneath the scoreboard that butts up to the street. As you can see here, the concessions on the east end concourse. And we're like, hey, we've gone this far, so we might as well check out the grandstand as well and try to get into the main seating section on the south side. However, you definitely do not want to sit in this seat. We're seat in the house. Right there. We're seat in the house. To get to the grandstand, we had to go all the way down to the front row of seats. But that was pretty cool though, because you're right there up close and personal to the field. Gives you a really cool angle and aspect. And walking up the steps on the south side grandstand, you can definitely tell where the steepness on the slope of the seats change. And this is definitely where that track used to be and where these additional seats were added, just like on the far side. And like where that steepness changes there is about the same distance of where the walkway is on the other side. So this used to probably be a full track at one point. Probably. The top few rows in the main grandstand are undercover a little bit, so you'd be in the shade the whole game, and there's TVs there. The main concourse is pretty open, and I really enjoyed the aesthetic of the black metal fencing separating the main concourse and the seating bowl. However, it does kind of make it look like you're in a jail. After walking the main concourse, we headed back down the steps, since the concourse is at the top of the large seating section. Meanwhile, the west and north end concourses are at the old track level. On the west side concourse, you get a really good look at the new football complex. And you can see that the tunnel where the players come out of feeds right into that complex. I did notice that these field goal posts are pretty weird though, very unique to see the two post design. We found some seats in the lower portion of the student section and it is beginning to fill in pretty well up before the kickoff. So buckle in and let's have a look at the game atmosphere. I think WSU may have one of the most interesting fight songs. Both my parents graduated from Ohio State and I always like to laugh that Ohio State likes to practice their spelling with the OHIO. Well, check this out.
It did not take long at all for the Cougars to get their first touchdown and that really set the tone of this game. But every time they score, the mascot Butch always serves to the crowd and he did it right by us every time. It was great. Get him going! And people absolutely love Butch. I don't think I've ever seen a mascot be loved so much by the students. It's really cool. I also really love the tradition they have on defensive third downs. And also, offensive first downs are pretty cool. You have to get that cougar growl in there. The crowd really wasn't as large as I would have hoped or expected, but they still had a great time. And the students were kept entertained throughout the game with fun games going on and they also took one of the cheerleaders and shaved his head since they were playing the Colorado State Rams and they kept saying shave the sheep. And of course you have to do a t-shirt toss. put this puppy through the dryer on high like seven times. And as the Cougars took a bigger lead, the student section really started to thin out, and the crowd as a whole definitely began to dissipate quite a bit. But the party was still alive and well for those that stuck around. And to be honest, I never really pay attention to cheerleaders too much, but they were doing some really impressive things right in front of us, and I really enjoyed getting to watch that, as they were quite talented. The game finished up with a final of 38-7, as the Cougars moved to 3-0 on the season, and the Colorado State Rams moved to 0-3 on the year. And I feel pretty bad for stadium staff with the mess that the student section leaves. But that's okay, that's what they get paid for. And just like the last review in Madison, I had to pick up a souvenir cup because we need some kind of souvenir, but I think we may be changing what we're going to pick up from football stadiums here pretty soon. And that just about does it for Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington. Thank you so much for watching this episode, especially if you stuck around all the way to the end. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see lots of other stadium reviews just like this one. Thanks so much, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Bye.